right, hello and welcome again back to Season 2 of the Well-Crafted Debate, where we bring two Brown Harris Stevens agents in to debate various topical conversation. So I'm going to throw some questions out to each one of them. I'm going to give some points out. We'll see who wins at the end. I'm here joined today uh, on my left with one of our uh, top Harlem teams. Uh, we have Leanne Stella joining us, who just rejoined Brown Harris Stevens, so welcome back. Uh, also, we have one of our top 1% agents in the company, uh, a person who in his, the majority of his career has spent at Brown Harris Stevens, uh, Matthew Hughes. So, Matt, welcome, Matthew. Um, so, are you both ready to uh, to have a well-crafted ready. debate? Ready to go, yeah. All right, so let's throw the, uh, the score up. We will begin. Um, first question. We're in the midst of, uh, you know, the uh, the presidential election coming up in November. But a lot of people inside the industry have said that it impacts the market. It doesn't impact the market. What do each of you see? Leanne, we'll start with you. I'd say yes, it does. Okay. I've had experience with buyers that were holding back, waiting to see if their candidate is the one elected. Okay. And Matthew, what do you see? It 100% does. You look historically back on past presidential elections, the market typically does slow down leading up to it. And I think that's because, you know, man's greatest fear is the unknown. And I think people sit on their hands and wait on the sidelines trying to see who will lead the country next. All right, well, we'll see. I'm going to give you both points on that because you had similar answers. I, I couldn't give one of you one. So each of you get a point. Next question. Let's say I'm a buyer and I have money to invest in this city, but I want to find the best value in it right now. Where do you see it? Matt, we'll start with you. Uh, first and foremost, you want to look for an apartment that needs some updating, needs work. If you could find an apartment that needs a full gut renovation and you have the bandwidth to handle that, um, to do a renovation and put in that value add certainly goes a long way. And right now, I would say 70% of inventory does need updating. Um, I would also look at neighborhoods that are up and coming that you see potential for growth, value growth in the next five to 10 years. One neighborhood that I'm keen on is Hudson Square, uh, sandwiched right between West Village and Tribeca. So it's a wonderful location. Uh, just as of a couple of years ago, it was 100% zone commercial. So it's still finding its personality. But you have the new Google building that just finished and employees started working there a couple months ago. And they're about to finish the full block Disney, Disney building. Um, so I think it's a neighborhood that has a lot of potential for value growth in the near future. Oh, great answer. Uh, Leanne, where do you see the value in the city right now? Well, I agree with Matt on the gut renovations. I think uh, that's definitely a product that there's not a lot of competition for. And you can end up with a product that's below market or below or equal to market value by the time you're finished and you have what you want and you have new. Uh, the other area that um, is my go-to is condos with a tax abatement. And if you can find one with 15 plus years left, there's a few of them. Uh, one of my favorites is the Rennie in Harlem that has 20 years left. I've put both investors and end user users in that uh, building and they've all been happy. Uh, you end up with a better cap rate as an investor and as an end user when you go to resell, you're, you have an edge against the competition. All right, you're both bringing your game today. I'm going to give you both a point on this one. I mean, uh, but this next question, I'm going to have to only give one point. I'm sorry. Um, I am looking for the best slice of pizza in this city. Um, you need to each tell me where that slice is. Matt, we'll start with you. If you want a quick, regular slice, Joe's is amazing, so is Patsy's, but hands down, the best pizza in New York City is Prince Street Pizza. Okay, and why would you say that? And what do you order there? What well, am ready, I getting there? You already told me, Leone, that you haven't tried it, so you, you don't know until you taste it, but it, it's <laughs> it's the rich sauce, it's the softness of, of the dough. It's hard to explain. It's just top quality ingredients throughout. I love their vodka Sicilian slice. It's okay. just uh, it's delicious pizza. Nice. It's addictive. All right, yeah. all right, Matt. What, what do you think, Leanne? Well, Where? go on Sicilian slice, too, but I like Mama's, too, on the okay. Upper West Side on Broadway. Uh, it's a third generation pizza shop. Grandma's got a shop around the corner. Um, it's, you know, a little hole in the wall with just a counter and a couple of stools. So when you want a slice to go, get the mushroom one with caramelized onions and sauteed cremini mushrooms. Ooh, all right. Never I, wrong with mom and pop place. Like yeah. I said, I, I tried uh, Leanne's, so I'm going to have to give her a point. So she is up one currently. We go into the next question. All right, I have $50,000 to spend on home preparation for the home that I'm about to put on the market. What are you doing to it to get the best value? 
Liam, we'll start with you. 100% paint clean stage. Okay. Um, I, you know, we've had experience with that of properties going above market with that kind of investment in the home. An Upper West Side pre-war that uh, pre-prepped uh, went 200000 over that estimate, $50,000 over ask. Um, another on uh, Morningside Heights where um, sold at asking um, and it ended up to be the highest priced property sold among comparable properties in the neighborhood and both of these were at the first open house. Incredible. All right, Matt, what are you, what are you saying? Certainly agree with Leanne on the cleaning. Uh, deep cleaning, especially the windows, is very important and painting. Uh, but for me, it's also redoing the floors. It uh, goes a long way, I think, when you have the floor sanded, be stained, especially in a lighter color. helps to bring in light, makes the space feel a little uh, airier, brighter. Um, and I don't know if you could do painting floors and staging for 50000 but staging would be a close fourth for me. Okay. All right. I, and I, I just want to give uh, each of you a point for this because the, you both you know, I learned something from. But I do want to make a point at re- mentioning it. At Brown Harris Stevens, you actually get... Uh, with a, a new service that we have up to $50,000 for home preparation services paid for up front if you want it, and then you pay a closing at a small interest rate. So the, these returns that you're talking about for staging and cleaning and window cleaning and redoing floors, uh, you know, they're, they're, especially for estate sales, you know, they're definitely an option. Um, so we're going to keep Leanne up one right now, and we're going to move on to the next question. I'm looking for the perfect closing gift right now. Um, what do I get? Uh, what do you do? Uh, let's start with you, Matt. Uh, I like to make it very personalized and a custom gift. I like to find out what drives my clients, what their interests are, and try and donate to a cause that speaks to them. I've done everything from getting uh, water, uh, clean water tanks uh, for families in Cambodia, putting their name on it, and sending them photos of that with all the paperwork uh, to donating to um, the Maasai tribe in Africa. Um, and I feel that it kind of is a connection that they don't typically get. Uh, it really speaks to them and their heart and gives them fond memories of the purchase of their home or the sale of their home. That's great. That's great. Liam, what do you do for a closing gift? One of my favorite things, or what I like to do, is buy local. So uh, I like to introduce my uh, buyers to something special in the neighborhood. And one of my favorite places is Nilu in Harlem. It's a a gift shop that's black-owned, and they curate a very nice quality of uh, home goods and gifts that are by uh, black and brown artists and creatives. That's incredible. I, I... I love both. I, I just think the uniqueness uh, of yours. I haven't heard of something like that before, and, and very creative. I'm gonna throw you that point, Matt. But I I, I love both ideas. Uh, we have two questions left. I think the the second to last question is going to be. We have seen a lull in this market over the last year plus. I would love to know from each one of you what needs to happen to this market in order for it to return to the energy that you might have seen somewhat in 2002 or even pre-pandemic. Leanne, we'll start with you. I think we need to see interest rates come below 6%. That is, We need that to get buyers and sellers back into the market in a meaningful way. Um, but what I also find interesting is seeing the first time home buyers come into the market to try, despite the interest rates, to get out of the rental game. Uh, rents are up, prices are down, uh, and these buyers are finding a way uh, to make this work, uh, to secure their place in New York City. And then we're working with them in creative ways to uh, find them banks that will put money towards their closing costs or even grants uh, or getting the sellers to buy down their rates, for instance. Okay. Matt, what has to change? Certainly agree with Leanne on that. Interest rates certainly need to come down. Uh, And I've seen buyers being very creative and looking for more unconventional loan products, not just your typical 30-year fix. Uh, I've had more buyers looking at adjustable rate mortgages, interest-only loans, um, seller financing than I ever have before in my 15-year career. Uh, I also think we need the foreign purchasers to come back, which I believe they will. We've gotten inflation under control, and that is something that Europe is still very much struggling with. Um, And, you know, I think the foreign purchasers are not here because of their own local markets, some of them because of geopolitical issues, some of them because of political tensions that our own leaders have caused, Um, but I'm hoping, uh, I remain hopeful as a brand ambassador for New York City, spokesperson for New York City, that in 2025 things will begin to improve. 
right? Uh, a plus answers from both of you are going to get a point each. Uh, that is, at, at, we've actually entered into the final question at a tie. Um, so let's get to the final question, which is, um, I know both of you are very involved philanthropically into this city. Uh, and to those that are watching, they may gain some inspiration from this. What are you doing uh, you know, within your communities to give back? Um, Matt, we'll start with you. Um, there's a couple of organizations that I volunteer with over the years, uh, but one that I've donated kind of more of my time to recently than others is Neighbor Coalition for Shelter. Um, I volunteer for many years. I'm now honored to be on the board. We help individuals struggling with homelessness. We have three facilities uh, in Manhattan and the Bronx, um, and we help individuals struggling with homelessness through a comprehensive array of services um, with long-term housing, substance abuse treatment, therapy, uh, vocational training, and then eventually housing support and employment support. Um, so our ultimate goal is to get people on their feet, self-sufficient, um, contributing members of society, um, a lot of people come to us with past trauma, um, so to see their lives kind of make a 180 is a wonderful thing. And if anybody wants to learn more about that, it is uh, ncsinc.org, so that's ncsinc.org. Um, so I recommend you look it up. It's a wonderful organization. It's awesome, man. Uh, Liam, what are you doing to give back? So my business acumen is all centered around supporting local, and um, our team dedicates a percent of our commissions towards art and community, and that goes back to the uh, local nonprofit organizations, small businesses, and artists in the community. I think it's vital for us as real estate agents to um, support what makes our neighborhoods unique, uh, to su you know support those groups that are really um, the the beautiful fabric of our neighborhoods. Uh, two of the organizations uptown that uh, we support quite often is Classical Theater of Harlem and Harlem Grown. That's great. And Wonderful. both uh, information was at the bottom of the screen if you each want to, you know, give back as well that are watching. Uh, both answers are incredible. So I'm going to give you each a point. We will end in a tie. So the tie, the rules of a tie, we haven't seen this before. The rules of a tie is, is that you will take my card and I will throw it in the air and what it lands on if it's the Studio 1873 side Leanne will win okay. but if it's the the blank side so blanks have nothing on it I win nothing, Matt wins okay. alright and and the winner of it does also get nothing Okay. so that actually so is there's a lot to win here and a lot to lose here okay. correct alright All right. so let's do it right now winner is All right. Leanne Leanne is the winner so thank you both for joining us. I, I, I We're going to get you back into that hot weather, uh, in New York City weather. Uh, join your clients. But I, I appreciate you both joining us. Good luck for the rest of the summer as we enter into the fall market. Thank you, Matt. Thank Thanks, you, Leanne. Man. Appreciate it. A lot of fun. It sure was. <laughs> All right.